With the recent reveal of Battlefield 2042 and its associated trailers and all of the games that were just announced at E3 for Xbox and all the awesome titles that'll be coming soon, I realized that the kind of game boredom route is going to be ending soon and but before that happened I decided that with Battlefield being announced that I would get back in the swing of Battlefield and go back and play the last good Battlefield in my opinion. Because Battlefield 5 was a rocky sequel even though they had everything spoon fed for him. And in the process of doing the peacekeeper quest, doing all the dog tags, the escalation skin and all that, all solo with guides of course, but after just doing all this, I had a lot of time to ponder as I was sorting out some stuff. And I wondered, how is it that so many game developer studios bought sequels where they don't really have to do anything? Now, as a Destiny player and several other Destiny players should be well aware of this, but Destiny 2 in its vanilla, was very, very, very bad. Like quite literally, all they had to do between Destiny 2 and Destiny 1 is new story, keep old guns, add new things, and just copy and paste and continue on. But for some flippin' reason, Bungie decided to try and rework a lot of things. Time to kill was slower, freaking a lot of abilities were changed, some people lost their favorite subclasses, double primary system, not to mention a pretty lackluster campaign. Well, I say lackluster, but a lot uh, there wasn't much exploration. Like, the campaign was over and then that was done. Strikes were happening and that was it. But when I say lackluster campaign, I mainly refer to the DLCs, as half of the story missions from these DLCs would become strikes, and there didn't seem to be a lot of effort going to them. Of course, Bungie rectified everything, Forsaken came out, it was a smash hit, and with that yearly expansions of Shadowkeep and Beyond Light, they've been steadily building up on a greater system. Armor 2.0 came with Shadowkeep, Beyond Light brought Stasis, and a lot of people would like to revert to that. It is still some of the most popular the game has been in a long time. And Destiny, I will say, has been fixed. Season of the Splicer is definitely enjoyable, Season of the Chosen was definitely a building block to that, and it is a genuinely a good game now that any person can enjoy, even if they don't like the sh looter shooters too much. But at the same time, the same thing goes for Battlefield and the recent titles. Now, I've seen Battlefield in recent memory as a lot of ups and downs, like freaking Battlefield 4, high point. But then we get to Battlefield Harmline, and that was kind of a low point. I'm not saying that one was bad, I didn't play it much, so I can't personally say but it didn't blow anything out the water. And then Battlefield 1 hits, and it is a masterpiece of gameplay, visuals, storytelling. It was an amazing game, and even so far after its heyday when it came out in 2016, or 2015, so over a half a decade ago, it's still got a pretty active player base on Xbox, even nowadays, and even more active player base on PC. And to what that owes, that is a staple to basically how good of a game it was, that it still got things playing, even after a sequel came out, and even though it is newer, even though there's new things to get, even though it is a, air quotes, newer, better game, Battlefield 1, I think, still has a higher player base than Battlefield 5. Now, it's kind of the same thing, where honestly, they just had to take Battlefield 1 reskin weapons to World War II, copy and paste vehicles to World War II planes. Instead of biplanes, there are monoplane piston fighters. There was a lot of things they just had to change the visuals of. Who was fighting, the languages they spoke, what they were wearing, what weapons they were holding. But for some reason into Battlefield 5, they mucked a lot of stuff up. Like the first change that was a change they didn't need, the lack of 3D spotting. Now the only kind of spotting you could do was with a few gadgets, and they were mostly recon based gadgets. Which, while that does make sense in the long run, it kind of makes it hard to be a team player if you have five assault players, in a, or three assault players, and a one medic. It's kind of hard to be scouting, or be aware of your surroundings when none of them are wearing anything that can spot people. Now, of course, there was a heads up system. If you saw an enemy, you could double tap a trigger and basically say there's danger that way. But that was 
no one paid attention to that. Now, when it comes to Battlefield as well, there were so many mechanics that they had just changed. Now, Battlefield 5 had a change that I can't tell exactly if this was a good or bad. It's entirely dependent on who was there. But the change from the type of weapons that Battlefield had, Battlefield 1 had specifically, to customizable tech trees for upgrades in the weapons there, that seemed a little bit too... too out there. Like, the, the weapon ranking system, while it's something to grind for, the rewards and everything, it didn't seem worth it. Getting a gold weapon skin, while it was a gold tiered weapon skin and it was a reward, it didn't seem like something worth grinding for, especially with how hard some of the challenges were. Now, granted, there I do like Battlefield 1's version way better because the system to unlocking new guns was ridiculous. Now, case in point, new DLC comes out. It is that they shall not pass, and then they come out with a new shotgun, the Schroger Inertial. Now, they would have had a challenge, I forget specifically what it was, but it would be like, I think 20 kills with the Model 10A Slug variant, and then it would be like 10 kills with the M97 Backboard variant. It would be something very simple that would take a little bit of doing, and you would get the gun. And if you wanted another variant of it, you would do that challenge. In this case, the two variants being one Buckshot Shrogern and a, slu a Slug Shrogern. Now, I do think Battlefield 1's system was a little bit better because you did have different weapon types for different players. If you were the guy who wanted to poach up on an LMG, sit there and just mow people down as they came across this hill, there was the suppressive variant that came with bipods, extended mags, a little scope, and you could just dump out rounds like nobody's business. Or if you wanted to play the storm person, you could have the LMG in your hand, it would have a little bit better recoil, and you could just freaking rush at people's faces and then blast the trigger a few times. It was the same thing. The backboard M97 was better for recoil. The Hunter was better for killing at range if you didn't think you would really want to push. And there were so many variants that could fit different play styles. There was entire medic rifles that had scopes and bipods so they could take shots from a distance. While there was others that was fully automatic and better hip fire to the point where they could rush into trenches, kill people, and then apply the bandages. Then there was Battlefield 5 where every gun had options and while it might have been good there is so many guns not to mention the unlocks were terrible basically instead of battlefield one version where a dlc hits and new guns have a assignment to unlock them you just have to finish them with battlefield 5 it was every single week there was a new sort of battle pass that you had to do challenges for and if you made it all the way to the end of the tier you would get your new gun but if you didn't uh, you're shit out of luck no new gun. You gotta wait until it comes back around. Not to mention when it came back around, it was in the armory. It was super freaking expensive. Like, why would you? I'm not even kidding. I took a break from Battlefield entirely. I stopped playing Battlefield 5 100%. And then when I came back, there was like 30 guns that I could buy. And sure, I had the credits just because I didn't spend them on much. But at the same time, it was like, Jesus, this is ridiculous how much these are. I was flat broke after that. Now, it's to say this is the basic issue with some game developers that they had this amazing game battlefield one they just had to adjust for setting and time period not change any mechanics keep the game 100 percent the same just maybe adjust some gadgets so they work a little bit more in tune like the spotting flare i do like how they change spotting flare instead of just shooting it on the ground and every enemy in a 30 meter radius being spotted you had to shoot it up in the sky and actually eliminate it i do like some changes like that that made sense but then 100 percent all they had to do between Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 was copy-paste the game. Yet they didn't, and the game floundered for it. Now, that's just kind of the rant for today. I have no idea why there's so many game developers that all they have to do to actually have success is copy and paste games for new settings, and they'll make more money than they did when they frickin' I'd say bait and switched people. And they said, this is gonna be the better game. This is the next generation of gaming. And then they completely make it a worse game. And I can't believe I found there's nobody in this server. Aside from that, uh, that's pretty much all to say. Um, I've been enjoying Battlefield 1, hopping back on it, of course. And Battlefield, I'm super excited for it. E3 got announced, there's so many new things. So that was just a little rant I had in my brain that I wanted to get out of. Oh, holy crap, game developers, do you even know what you need to do sometimes? But with that, my name is Matt Scorpion, and thank you for watching.